All right, so we seem to be already live on Zoom. So yeah, welcome to our first attendees. Welcome to our uh, another webinar from the series of subject webinars. And today, as you might already know, we are going to talk about international finance and international management, studying these subjects in Germany. And as always, it's me with you guys. I hope you're not tired of me. My name is Georgi, and I will be, uh, as always, the so-called so co-host slash co-moderator of the webinar. Very interesting topics we are going to talk today. And we have two guests, as you can see, but they will talk actually about four programs in sum. So we will have also bachelor level program, master level program, even we'll touch upon MBA level program. So uh, keep in touch, stay in touch and uh, stay tuned. Uh, I would say, so for those uh, who do not know how we proceed quickly through technical details, if you have any questions, you can set it in, in the Q&A. Um, you can see the Q&A button in the bottom part of your Zoom interface. There you can send in your questions and I will monitor them. I will collect these questions if they are program specific and you will have an opportunity to receive the answers to the questions live after both the presentations are done. I would say in around uh, 35, 40 minutes. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And yeah, also uh, you cannot use the chat. However, keep an eye on the chat because I will, I will be sending some uh, interesting links maybe to you or some contact details maybe shared in the chat. So keep an eye on the chat as well. So long story short, let me now do a small presentation uh, from my side before we move to our guests. Okay, so I will quickly share the screen with you guys. Yeah, as I said, this topic is studying international finance and international management in Germany, these kind of umbrella topics. The webinar agenda for today, as I said, we have two universities present today, uh, University of Nürtingen and Geislingen, and we have our guest Katharina Günther, who will be talking about master's level program, um, Master of Science in International Finance and also MBA in International Management. And also from Hochschule Fulda, we have Marco Grinowski, who will be talking about two level programs, like bachelor level program, international business and management, and master's level program in international management. So before we move to the most interesting part, uh, Please bear with me sometime. So who is behind the webinar today? Uh, many of you might know, many not. It's my German university. So just quickly about us, uh, briefly about us. We are Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. When you go to our web, uh, web page, you will be able to find over 2,400 programs, English to study programs. And you can see on the left-hand side of the small excerpt of our study finder, we have both bachelor, master's level programs, and also, uh, yeah, some short courses and language courses as well. And our mission in general is to help international students like you on the way, their way towards studying in Germany. And actually our study finder is one of the ways of doing so because it has a lot, lots of filters. You can see just a so-called demo version, but when you go to website, you will see the largest version with lots of filters, which makes your search for the program more onto the point and efficient. The second way of helping you is through writing up articles. For example, for now, we have over 100 comprehensive art articles on various topics, uh, for example, on a letter of motivation writing, on uh, rankings, on uh, scholarships, on technical universities, uh, on yeah, you can find uh, articles on student student applicant visa, something that you might not be aware of. So all these things are there and yeah, quite comprehensive ones, quite informative ones. I would say, I would suggest you to check them out. And the third way of helping you is through our uh, webinars, like the one that we are having today right now. We have uh, approximately 150 webinars per year. I would say it's a bit uh, modest number. But it's a bit, it's quite more right now. Um, and uh, you can see that, yeah, webinar topics also vary. It can be general webinars on UNESCO's visa and subject to webinars like the one we are having today and tomorrow also. Yeah, the topics are different. It can be physics, it can be biology, it can be in finance, management, et cetera, et cetera. You can go to our webpage, mygermanuniverse.com to the webinar section and you will see there all the webinars that are already planned and you can sign up for them for free. And our, my suggestion would be also to create an account on our webpage because by doing that, you will be able to unlock all the options that our um, website is available to offer you. And of course, uh, opening the web uh, the account is also completely for free for you. And regarding our team, yeah, we are quite international. Uh, we are based technically in Hamburg, but we are all over Germany and also uh, around the world as well because we have people who are based uh, I, outside Germany and outside Europe as well. And we are uh, counseling in different languages and you can see some of the list of the languages uh, on the slide as well. Um, 
okay, that was about my GU and now about some uh, education related issues, more German st studying in Germany uh, related issues more. So for those who are more interested into Germany, uh, German taught study programs, I would also suggest you to check out Hochschule Compass because there you might find some uh, interesting programs for you in uh, the given subjects in German, taught in German, but for those who are more into English taught study programs, and my guess would be that most of you, if not all of you are belong to this category, then of course, check out my German university's study finder. There you will be able to find over 400 degree programs uh, related to international finance and international management. And you can see that most of them are in uh, on master's level, but there are quite a lot of number also bachelor levels program. And uh, most of them are English only, uh, absolute majority, I would say. And English only, by English only, we mean that uh, you do not, not need to know any German for studying on these programs. Of course, yeah, knowing German is always fine in Germany, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, for these programs, uh, you do not need any German. Uh, okay, for for the newcomers and new buys, uh, if you do not know what to expect when it comes to studying uh, financing or management in Germany, I would also suggest you to check out our generic subject pages where you can find some general information regarding the tuition fees of the pro of the universities that are offering these programs or overview. You can have an overview of application, admission, language requirements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, it will be nice to for the new buyers to have a larger picture of what does it mean to study these subjects in Germany. Uh, yeah, regarding the searching tip from our side, uh, yeah. I always say don't rely too much on quantitative ranking uh, metrics like rankings, for example, uh, and also do not rely only solely on city names. Again and again, you can very often I can hear from students, okay, I want to go to Berlin to study. It's go totally fine to go to study in Berlin. They have nice universities. Uh, they have nice, uh, yeah, higher education institutions, but Berlin. Germany is not only about Berlin. There are much more places where you can get high quality education uh, in Germany. So in order to make sure you do not miss any, miss out any on the opportunities, yeah, go be beyond that. And uh, there are two types of universities I would like you to know about. Um, there's one type is universität type of university. Uh, and yeah, you can even in our study finder, you can filter for that. You can filter for the programs in, uh, uh, for example, financing and management, which are offered exactly by this type of universities. And the second type of university is University of Applied Sciences. Uh, in, in English, it's called like this. Yeah, Marco is doing like, uh, you can see Marco's reaction because he's representative uh, of this <laughs> university. And you can see several names uh, in German, how these universities can be called. And yeah, you can also on Study Finder um, um, uh, filter for uh, programs offered by this type of university only. And what is the really difference? I will not go too much into the difference between these two types because yeah, it, it will take a lot of time and our webinar is not exactly about this, but to provide this general information, what you should know about. Again, generally speaking, when it comes to focus, um, in case of universität type of university, the focus is more towards research and theory. And in, in case of UAS, it's more into application and practice. But yeah, if you are more interested into further details about historical differences, even just drop me an email and I will be, I'll try to be as concise and informative as possible regarding the differences. Um, and yeah, last, last but not least, again, regarding the search, uh, yeah, play a bit with the words also when you are search, searching for the programs in order to not, not to miss out any of the opportunities that might be actually the best fit for you in terms of your interest and in terms of your background. Don't be very strict with, when you are searching for the programs. Um, okay, so that was all from my side. And now we are moving to the most interesting part of our presentation and our webinar for today. To our first guest, Katarina Günther, as I said, she's from Nürtingen Geislingen University. Uh, you can see where it is located, quite south south of Germany, I would say. And uh, yeah, uh, the two programs presented today are a Master of Science program in International Finance, and then Katarina will talk about MBA level program in International Management. Katarina, please, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll first share my screen with the. Um program. Okay, it should work, I hope. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So thank you for a kind introduction. My name is Katarina and I'm the coordinator of the International Finance Program. 
And I'm going to give you like a short overview of this specific um, program at the INGU. And as was already told, um, we are basically in the middle of, of um, Europe, our Nürtingen Geisling University close to Stuttgart, which is basically the capital of the Baden-Württemberg state. And our university is, is a university of applied sciences, so it's quite different as a University of Tübingen in Heidelberg, which is more a research university. It was founded in 1949, so it's quite a small university, which has around 5,000 students and approximately 300 international students as well. It used to be focusing more on agriculture, on nature, but because Baden-Württemberg is quite an industrial region, which has a lot of global players, but also middle-sized companies. So very industry heavy. We have also a um, very good focus on, on business and sustainable development programs. So this is basically the history behind um, the international finance program. So we are on the one hand, part of the Stuttgart metropolitan area. Stuttgart is quite a large city in, in German terms, but Nürting itself is quite small. It's a safe study environment. And because we have small study programs, it's a really good learning environment for students. So on the next slide, yeah, so just some key facts. Um, the program was established around 2004. The regular study period is three semester, which is 90 European credits. It's also full time and it's completely in English. So you don't have to have German language skills. It's of course good to have basic German language skills, but for the program itself, everything will be in English. And because of that, approximately 50% of our students are international. What is also important, we only start once a year. So we just recently started. Um, usually it's end of September or beginning of October. So you can only apply once a year. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a small study group. We usually have around, officially we only have 25 study places to offer. So it ranges between 20 to 30 students each year. So it can be a really tight knit learning environment for those who, who want it to be. Okay, on the next one. Yeah, if we now look at the overall profile of the international finance uh, master program, I would say because we are a application, a University of Applied Sciences, we focus more on application and solution oriented approaches. So if we, for instance, look at the, um, how the everyday life of the students look like, it's for instance, that students are often expected to have their laptops with them. And during their lectures, um, they are presented with current topics, with current challenges and um, in the form of projects, in the form of case studies. And then they are taught how to solve these problems with their own financial models. So lectures are often based on financial modeling. And this is then of course consolidated by learning the theory behind it. But you usually don't start with the theory, you start with practice, practical approaches, and then it's consolidated with the theory behind it. And I would say that the further specification in this program is also that we try not to think in sections and divisions. So for instance, the Dean of the program that you can see on the picture here, Professor Ernst, he likes to talk of it as a house of finance. And in this house of finance, we don't have um, divisions, but things you learn, for instance, in equity analysis, you can, um, you know, um, you can, put into management skills and so on. So everything is basically interconnected. So the key overall is not to become a expert in risk management or an expert in financial engineering, but the students who finish their program, our target is that they will work in top positions and therefore they will be exposed to different kinds of, um, of topics. Um, so, yeah, in, in general, maybe just what is important that you will you will learn the standard, the classic financial models, the classic theories and so on. But because we are more application um, focused, you will also learn more about imperfect 
markets and how to work in a constantly changing environment and so on. And the reasoning behind it, again, as I said earlier, the goal for us is that our students are going to be able to work in top positions. And that means that the problems will not present themselves in kind of need, like in a textbook. But um, working in top position means that students have to figure out what the challenges are and, and solve them later on. So now just a quick overview of how, how the structure itself looks like. For instance, the first semester, it um, is divided into four modules. This is the structure with our program. Four modules and each module is again divided into two or three lectures and they are always interconnected. And again, you have the classics, so you have financial management, which consists of management, accounting, financial modeling, you'll have financial analysis, but also management skills, which for our dean is one of the most important um, modules because it focuses on, on conflict management, intercultural management, and so on, which is very important if you are working in those high level uh, positions. And um, yeah, so this is basically the first semester, 30 European credits. And the second semester looks quite similar. Again, the structure is that you have four modules, each module divided into two or three lectures. All of them are interconnected. Now, what is um, maybe important to note is that around, depending on the semester, around 60 to 70% of those lectures are done by professors who work full time at the university and around 42 to 30 percent are lecturers from a, from um, external lectures so basically they work full time in a bank or in a company and they just give lectures on a specific topic and because of their knowledge they students get to know like the current topics in the financial industry and this is also important if you are learning in a University of Applied Sciences. Um, what is also important to know that it's, it's a full-time study program and you have different, you have case studies, you have presentations, you have examinations. And because of the small group, lecturers also kind of expect um, active participation and group work. But we think because of this interconnective studying, students learn so much that they be able to work in this top, top positions later on. So basically this is like compulsory. The first semester with four modules, the second semester again with four modules, everyone receives 60 credits. And after that students basically have um, two options to continue their studies and finish their studies. And basically, option one is staying at the NG University and option two is going abroad. And both options can be divided into several paths. Most of the students, I would say, because 50% are international and for them, usually they don't want to go abroad again. They stay with us and they, um, they attend the module innovation in the financial industry which includes such as digital finance, fintech. So it basically it, um, it looks at transformations in the financial industry. And the students can also write a master thesis. So for those who want to finish quite quickly, this is like the best path. We also have a specific um, for, for selected students. We don't have many places for that specific double degree with the MBA international management, which is also at this university. So this is also an option for those interested. So basically this is for those who want to stay at the NGU. And for those who want to deepen their knowledge in a specific area, who want to just go abroad, they can do that as well in their third semester. And uh, this option can be divided again into several opportunities. So most importantly, that would be free mover. That means basically you go abroad on your own, you apply independent from us, and after you finish the program abroad, we recognize some of the courses towards your degree here. You can also go abroad just for one semester via our international office. So you have different opportunities. You can stay within the European Union. You can also go to United States, Australia. So there are various options there. And quite recently, we also started a specific double degree path for selected students with the University of Pisa in Italy. 
especially interesting for those who want to, to get a PhD later on, which is easier to get if you have a degree at a university, a research university. So again, this is like option one, stay here, finish your studies in three semester. And if you want to prolong it a little bit, you can also use option two, including a study abroad period as well. Um, okay, yeah, so the, the as I said, the, the first year is compulsory, then you can diversify um, as you wish. And because of this, this individualization of the course, basically, there are the career prospects for, air for our alumni are quite widespread. So you can, of course, go into those classical areas like consulting, private equity, portfolio management. As I mentioned earlier, Baden-Württemberg is an industrial region. We have a lot of global players in the region who are in need of financial experts. But we also have a lot of middle-sized companies that have a specific focus on some market niche. And they are small, but they rely on a worldwide market. So they are usually also in need of, um, of students who have international experience, who speak various languages. And of course, um, last point, students can also start their own, their own company. I think the last point, yeah, some just some quick points on application and admission. And for our program, there is a lot of time because we only start once a year and we just recently started. The deadline for application is June 1st. At the moment, it starts around beginning of March. So right now you can't even apply, but usually it's from beginning of March until June 1st. At the moment, our application runs through UniAssist. It might change in the future, but um, any updates will be available on time. And what do you need? The basics, you should have a previous degree in business, business law, economics, management, that kind of, of area. You should have a good English proficiency, so upper intermediate, at least a B2 on a European level. And we also would like to have a declaration of study motivation from you, basically where you state your reasons why you want to, to study with us. And actually, this is quite important because um, we do have a ranking because we have a lot of applications. And we do look at your at your um, final grade, but due to the study motivation, you can improve your ranking as well. And regarding the fees, we are a public university, but uh, Bad Württemberg have, has like a special special path. So, two hundred euros administration fees have to be paid by basically everyone. It's for European students, home students, and international students. And then we also have a moderate amount of 1,500 euros per semester for, for international non-European students. So coming from outside of the European Union. But yeah, as, as we just start once a year, you still have time to, to apply, to figure out if, if um, the program fits you. And maybe um, a last remark before I finish up. I think what speaks for the program as well that there is um, many students are often overwhelmed by the amount of study options they have. And I think what speaks for this program, because we are also applied, is that it gives everyone in the first year um, a toolkit that everyone needs. Basically, it's fixed. You can't choose. You don't have any electives because we have like, um, you know, we have uh, lecturers from outside, so we kind of update our program um, every, you know, regularly. So the first year is compulsory for everyone. Everyone receives the toolkit, what you need to be able to start successfully in every branch of finance. And after students kind of get more secure in themselves, more secure in what they are interested in, they can just diversify their, you know, their interest and stay at the NG University or go, go abroad. So I think that speaks for our program as well. Yeah, if you have any questions, thanks again for your, um, for your consideration. If you have any questions, check out our homepage. Um, we have an update quite soon, so it might not work properly for the next two weeks, but um, you can always write an email to finance. This is the easy way to contact us. Yeah. 
So thank you very much. I think that would be the first program. Georgie? Oh, yes. Georgie, sorry, yes. I, I said the wrong one. I think I'll just change the second one now. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so unfortunately my my colleague is unavailable for a short notice, so I'm going to give also a very short, very short introduction to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the MBA, International Management, which is also offered in, um, at our university. It's a different faculty, but it's also directly at the Nürtingen campus. So, finish check. Apologies again, if you have like any in-depth question, you can always ask my colleague who's Sibylle Reimer. She is the program coordinator. I am for the International Finance Master. She takes care of the international management program. Okay, I'll, I'll skip um, the introduction to the university because I already did that. I would just emphasize again that we are University of Applied Science focused on solution and application approach. I think what is also important to note is that the faculty, the, sorry, not the faculty, and the study dean of the International Management Program is Professor Blunk, on, on, you can see in here. And he is also a project leader of um, a startup program here at the NGU. It's called Zukunftsgründen, and it basically helps students to develop ideas if they want to start a startup. So for those interested in, in this area, this is really good because he is also um, the project leader of this program. Okay, so what, what is the target group for this specific program? I would say the difference to the international finance program, um, it's basically for those who don't have an economy or business um, background. So for instance, for international finance, you would need that because we start from a certain level. But if you're, for instance, if you have an engineering background and so on, this is something for you because it's basically for everyone with, um, for everyone who wants to, to improve their business competence, to improve their management skills. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of background you have. The MBA is for everyone who just wants to improve in this certain area. And because of, of the diverse background of the students, they basically offer a broad exposure in trainings in key business administration and management topics, including topics such as supply chain management, marketing, finance, and so on. So this is really good for everyone who doesn't come from an economy and business background. Now again, because we are applied to university, you'll have um, most of our professors, or not, not even most, all of them have, have an industry ex background. So before they start working at the university, they have basically to prove that they've worked in the industry for several years. And this is kind of incorporated in the, in the curriculum of the MBA as well. What is also specific for this program is that it's it has a blending learning approach. You have classroom sessions, you have e-learning periods, you have you know, um, projects. It's not like you're just sitting there and listening to your professor, you have like active participation because the study group is again, quite small, similar to the international finance program. You can also study abroad for one semester or longer if you want to. There are many partner universities that are, um, you know, our international office has like hundreds of those. So I think you can find something that fits, fits your path. And um, you can also write your master thesis in partnership with a company or even abroad later on at the end of your studies. Yeah, and as you can see, just some examples, um, lecturers for this program, they are coming from Bosch, they are coming from, Daimler or Mercedes now again, they are coming from, you know, the um, companies around the region. The program also has an advisory board from companies around the region. So, you know, the, the lectures are staying up to date on the current topics that are happening in, in the region. 
but you also have like company tours, guest lectures as well included in the curriculum. And as I mentioned earlier, you can write your thesis in cooperation with a company. And it's also possible to do a um, you know, voluntary internship uh, in, in the region as well. Now, if we look at the structure, it's similar to the international finance program. You have three semesters, you have uh, compulsory modules everyone has to attend, then you have elective course, and then you have a preparatory seminar paper on how to write, you know, like a small thesis, and later on, you have four months to write your thesis. And the first semester, it focuses on building the foundation because everyone has a different background. So you have general management, you have value chain management, financial resources management, but also language skills. The second semester is, is more in depth. So students kind of um, get more case studies in, in, in a more international worldwide context. So you have managerial economics, international business and management, international value chain management and so on. And the third semester, again, combination of practical courses, you can do uh, your master thesis as well, or you can, you know, put in a semester of leave doing an internship. So this is quite flexible. So the first two semester, again, fixed, quite fixed. Later on, you can choose the path um, you want to go further in your career. Yeah, this is just like a more broad overview of what you have. The structure at our university is just that we have like a module name and each module is again divided into two or three um, like lectures and they, they change from time to time depending on, on current topics that need to be introduced to students as well. Okay, yeah, so the elective courses again, um, you have one that you can choose in your third semester and they change uh, regularly, depending on the topic, depending on the lectures that the university can, can get. And the areas are very widespread. So you can choose from digital transformation, startup lessons, sustainability, managing innovation, and so on. So I think you get like a broad, broad um, opportunity to choose what you want. And what is also, I think, required for the international students is um, to have at least a one level in, in German language. So um, the language courses are for free. There are various ones you can choose. Um, they are offered every semester. And I think for the international students, it's even compulsory that you prove that you have at least a, a one level German level skills. Yes, so just some points again on the implication. Um, what is a small difference between the two programs is that international management starts twice a year. So you can apply, for instance, if you want to start in the summer semester until November 15th, so in just like two weeks. And they also um, are open for the winter semester, so application deadline would be June 15th. And um, it's quite similar. So applications run through UniAssist, where you basically just need to fill out application form. You need to upload certain documents, such as your first degree, school living, a certificate, work experience. And yes, as I said before, um, the non-native speakers would need proficiency in German of A1. And if you upload everything, if you have like completed all the formal, formal documents, there is also an entrance interview. For, for the students. And if you basically pass it, then you'll, you'll get um, a study place with them. Um, yeah, so just general in a nutshell, maybe again, it's three semesters, it's full time, but you can, you can extend it if you want to study abroad, if you want to do an internship, that's possible. Overall, there are 90 credits. You can start twice a year, so in October or in March. And the application deadline for March ends in two weeks, November 15th, or in June, um, if you want to start in October. It's in Nürtingen, it's located in Nürtingen, like 30 minutes away from Stuttgart. And again, the course is quite small, really tight knit learning environment. We only have like 20, 25 students um, for this program as well each semester. 
yeah, this is just some impressions, I think, because the program um, had its 20th anniversary event recently, I think. I think just some impressions for that. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry again, um, if you have any questions, you can just forward them to my colleague. She'll be able to explain everything much better. If you have like in-depth questions, check out the homepage. And yeah, thank you very much. That's all for me now. Thank you very much, Katarina, for both presentations. And yeah, I also put the email that you shared on was shared on the first page for, for Seville also in the chat. So anyone who is interested in more in-depth information, as Katarina said, address them to Seville. Okay, thanks a lot, Katarina. Let's now move to our next presenter and then we can open the floor for the live Q&A session. But before we do that, we are going a bit to the north, to the geographical center of Germany, I would say, close there. So it's Fulda University of Applied Sciences. And uh, as we already introduced, it's Marco Krinowski who will be talking about two, level, uh, two programs bachelor uh, level program in international business and management and master's program in international management. So I'm handing it over to Marco. Cheers, thanks for having me. Um, as you can see, I'm a master of multitasking. I can not share and talk at the same time. No, um, here we go. Uh, what I what I prepared for today is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into our program so much, for two main reasons. Uh, Fulda University is offering um, a lot of info sessions around the year. You can always get in touch with students and staff and student advisory. And um, you can look up the websites of the study programs to look at modules and contents and all that. So it's actually cooler to seize the chance today to ask questions and get, um, get into touch um, about topics you might not find on the website so easily. And um, because that's also something you can do later on if you feel slightly, slightly excited about or as excited about Fulda University as I do. Um, if you're interested in further information, you just look us up, Fulda University of Applied Sciences. You go onto the website, especially for the business department. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You go for departments and business, and then you find um, news, you find study programs, but you also find information events. And here you can say, awesome, I wanna know more about international business and management. So you can just look up info sessions and they're online uh, and for free. So, um, and that's people from the department. So you will get much better insights and you can get in touch with students. So maybe that's a little bit um, more beneficial. Um, again, you can look at the study programs website. Um, there's even lectures to sample. Um, so if you think that tastes great and you want to know more, um, join an info session. Um, you can see what I said, everything about contents and modules. I'm just going to uh, show that briefly today. Um, but again, I want to go into um, a general idea of what it's like to be an international student here at Fulda University of Applied Sciences. Um, I am the international marketing manager here at Fulda University in our international office. And um, my name is Marco. Uh, I got a background in intercultural, uh, intercultural management. Um, so not finance, but at least management studies. Um, so jumping right in, you've seen it already. Um, Georgie show, showed it. Uh, we are located and pretty much in the center of Germany, um, taking a train actually feels a lot like the center of Germany because many of the high velocity trains stop in Fulda. It takes about three hours to get to Hamburg, three hours to get to Munich, to Cologne, to Berlin, an hour uh, with a direct train, 90 minutes with a regional train to Frankfurt. So if you have an internship, friends, family uh, around Germany, um, it's just super easy to get there. Um, if you want to visit, I don't know, museums, concerts, Oktoberfest, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, um, you just hop on a train and you go to a place you'd like. And the Frankfurt Airport is an hour by train, so flying in and out and exploring the rest of Europe is also very, very easy. Uh, zooming in a little bit further, uh, to give you an idea, we are surrounded by beautiful, beautiful uh, nature. It's uh, the lower mountain ranges, Rhön, Spessart and um, Vogelsberg. 
The Rhön is the closest. It's about 20 kilometers, half an hour by train. Um, it's a brilliant region to, to disconnect from, from university struggles. Um, clean air, very green, very lush. Um, perfect for hiking, paragliding, mountain biking, canoeing, and you can see it in winter, you can go and ski. So um, fantastic um, alternative to library, class, and probably work. Another perspective on the region, uh, Katharina had a similar approach, is the metropolitan area Frankfurt-Rhein-Main. You see Fulda in the top right corner. Um, so yeah, Fulda belongs to this economically very, very powerful region of Germany. Um, it's just a different one. Stuttgart is one and then Frankfurt Rhein-Main here is another one. And there are 5.8 million people living in this area. Um, and 2.4 million, over 2.4 million of them are in employment. And 14.3% do not have a German passport. So it's a very international area. You hear bits and pieces of different languages. Um, people from around the world. There are 400,000 companies registered in that area. And the, sec the, the, the represented sectors are banking, finance, investment, construction, aviation, logistics, automotive, and chemical industry. The European Central Bank is located in Frankfurt. And post-Brexit, many financial jobs have been relocated from the city of London to places like Dublin, Paris, Amsterdam, but also Frankfurt. And um, Klarna FinTech uh, company just uh, increased their, um, their branches in Gießen, north of Frankfurt. So there's loads going on in the area and great career perspectives. The airport itself, um, it's not only good for flying, it's uh, Germany's largest airport and responsible for 44% of our air freight. So all the goods coming in need to be distributed. So you can imagine how many companies in and around Frankfurt deal with supply chain, with logistics, and the financial sector involved in that is also gigantic. And um, the unemployment rate in the green area you see here is 5%, and in full that's actually 3%. So we talk about full employment. There is rather a labor shortage. Um, many companies are desperately looking for um, people to work, students, but also graduates. And Germany-wide, we are talking about a labor shortage of 400,000 people each year. So in order to compensate the labor shortage at the moment, Germany would need 400,000 skilled workers coming in from abroad um, seeking employment. So um, I think that's a great start to talk about uh, studying and working uh, and business in Germany, because you do not only come and study for studying purposes, but also two thirds of international students, and they are more than 300,000 international students in Germany, they come to stay. And um, they really want to work here. And um, I think they can, you see the companies represented. Um, so if you have questions in that area, please do not hesitate. I am moving on, zooming further into Fulda. Beautiful, beautiful town, not so big. You can walk everywhere, bike everywhere, take a bus if you want to, um, but you definitely don't need to drive. There's no underground. Um, 70,000 people live in Fulda. It's uh, with 100,000 people if you count all the suburbs. It's a very old town, um, founded in 744. So we are almost 1300 years old. And um, very German, as you can see, half timber houses, cobbled streets, um, a Baroque quarter with dome and a castle, loads of green areas. So very, it has this German touch to it, very Disney worldy, um, if you're looking for this uh, German experience. Um, we are what we call a campus university. All our facilities are located in one area, library, cafeteria, all the faculties. Um, so you do not need to rush and run around the city, uh, maybe hurrying, missing classes or coming late. Don't worry, you come to campus in the morning, you have all your classes, you meet your friends, you bump into people. It's super easy to make new acquaintances because everybody is in one location. Uh, staff and faculty are in one location. If you have questions, if you need to catch uh, an appointment in between classes, you can, we are here. Um, library obviously is here and recreational areas for sports, for you can see it hanging in a hammock, um, meeting friends, um, obviously studying between classes, preparing a presentation. 
um, it feel it has this little village feel to it. And then in the periphery of the campus, there are dorms and there are some more in the city center. We are a little bit off the center. It's a, a 15 minute walk, uh, but it definitely um, is enough to wake up in the morning or to just disconnect on the way home when you get to campus and when you leave campus respectively. Um, today we get eight academic departments, over 60 study programs, and believe it or not, usually uh, universities of applied sciences do not award doctoral degrees. That was the case until 2013, 2018, I'm sorry. Fulda University was the first university of applied sciences to award doctorates. So one of the major differences between universities and universities of applied sciences died um, in that year. And now some more universities of applied sciences gained the, the independent right to confer doctorates, but we were the first and um, we are very proud to be to hold that um, uh, privilege. Um, talking about business programs, we do have a department of business with different, different bachelor's and master's programs. Um, you can see international business and management, international business administration, economic law, sustainability and ethics, and the master's programs. Um, Georgie mentioned it, uh, there are over 21,000 study programs in Germany at the moment, I want to say 21,400 odd, and 90% are taught in German, only 10% are taught in English. On bachelor's level, it's actually 97% that are taught in German. So having uh, English taught bachelor's programs is rare, and we have one, it's international business and management. On master's level, we are still not quite there yet to offer it fully in English. International management is a bilingual program. You do need a German C1, but many international students see it as an investment. They learn German back home or here in Germany. Um, I'll tell you about programs. Um, and uh, because knowing German and speaking German, um, opens doors, doors to scholarships, doors to jobs throughout your studies upon graduation. Um, you can approach landlords in German. It makes it much more likely to actually get an answer when finding a room. Um, of course, you can approach fellow students to found study groups, or you can participate in student initiatives and clubs and sports. Um, and it's just so much easier in German. Germany, if you ask me, runs in German still. So knowing German, learning German for a study program is definitely a very good investment, um, not only into, into a study program because it opens so many more doors um, to live in Germany. Um, now, international business management. Again, I'm going to make this uh, very short. Um, it's you can tell from the name, it's a bachelor's program with the basic in business and the specialization in management. Uh, it's taught in English only. You will need a B2 level of English. If you already have taken um, any of the standardized tests, IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, um, I can show you a website where you can see whether your score is sufficient or not. Um, the Department of Business also accepts native speakers. So if your high school education um, has taken place in English, they also accept that as a, sufficient, a proof of sufficient English skills. And um, it's taught in English, but at the same time, you will have to learn uh, a foreign language um, because it's international business. Um, so you can choose between or amongst Spanish, French, and German. Again, German makes a lot of sense. And if you already know you're going to do the master's afterwards, learning German already during your um, bachelor's saves you a lot of time and money. Um, quick overview of the actual modules that are being offered. Um, you can see a wide range of classic business and management um, programs. They're obviously also thinking about today's topic. There is financial accounting, financial reporting, corporate finance. Um, so if you if you have a burning desire for finance, you will also find it in here, but it's a, it's a very general bachelor's program preparing you for any future opportunity, founding your own business or specializing, specializing in different fields um, afterwards. You can see there's a study abroad or internship. We have over 100 partner universities abroad on all continents except Antarctica, obviously. And um, you can also do an internship abroad. 
uh, international students, they can do the internship in Germany because they are already abroad. Um, the good news is international business and management, we call it IBM, um, has two intakes in a year. You can start it in April, you can start it in October. Uh, the application period for the summer intake is already open. So you can apply right now until December 15th for the summer intake of international business and management. Uh, moving on, international management. It's a, a master's program uh, in business with a focus on management. Um, again, I said it, it's bilingual, so you will need um, English skills, but also German skills. Um, but again, 90% of study programs in Germany require German skills. Um, I have some good news later. So if you're like, don't, don't fret now, um, there are some good news coming up later. Uh, there are really cool double degree options in Australia and the US. And um, looking into the course offer, you can see um, divisional, divisional skills in green, marketing management, global human resource. You can see the leadership skills in the blue um, boxes, corporate governance, for instance. And then in purple, um, there is um, courses from an international business environment. And brown is the integration because we are a university of applied sciences. So there needs to be integration. There needs to be the hands on practical orientation um, in the learning experience. So you can see practical management, strategic management. Um, there are company visits throughout the program um, to, for instance, startups. And um, it also has internships and study abroad opportunities. Um, there are some electives um, in, um, uh, individual financial statement according to the IFRS and operations controllership. So you name it, but you also find that on the website. The cool thing is um, it also has two intakes a year. Again, you can apply right now for the summer intake until December 15th, or again from March on for the winter intake 23, 24. Um, so depending on where you are right now in your studies in your high school, um, we Actually, you don't have to wait a year. You don't lose a year. There are two intakes in a year. For those of you who are not, uh, who don't have, who do not have a command of German yet, and um, who'd like to study um, that program, we have a pre-study program where you can prepare for your studies. You already take some courses and you learn German, and you can improve your GPA by 0.3. So um, it improves your chances of admission. You learn German. You already being in Germany, being immersed in the language and um, prepare warm up, so to say, for your studies. Um, the offers of Fuller University of Applied, of Applied Sciences, uh, Fuller University of Applied Sciences have been very attractive uh, in the past. We have um, recruited, um, or today we have 9,329 students. So we are not very small. It's a medium-sized University of Applied Sciences. About 16.5% of our students do not have a German passport. They come from, from 100 different countries. And you can see that especially the business department is very international thanks to their study programs. Where do these students come from? Up until now, Cameroon is still coming in first, but slowly but surely India is taking over, uh, moving up the ranking. Um, but you can see from Asia to Sub-Saharan African countries, the Middle East. Um, there is, uh, 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 there is um, a, a good mix. And um, even Latin American students, like anything you can imagine uh, is represented on campus. And um, it's a thriving international community. The first Indian students to arrive noticed that our university sports doesn't have a cricket team. Why? Because Germans don't understand it. And, um, but they founded one. So now we have the, the Fulda University Knight Riders, and um, it's really cool to see Pakistani students and Indian students um, to play cricket together. And a small university town also has this freedom. You know, um, there is room, there is initiatives, and people are keen to try new things, and there's lots of support. Very good news. I'd like to finish strong. Financial matters. We are a state university in Hessen, and that means no tuition fees. Um, so yes, you'd have to learn German. That's your investment for the master program, um, but there are no tuition fees. 
What we charge is a semester contribution of approximately 300 euro per semester. Included in that is um, a semester ticket, a bus and rail pass for local and public transportation. So the bus in the morning to campus, a train to Frankfurt, a train to the Brothers Grimm Museum in Kassel, Mm, a regional train to um, Künstlerkolonie Darmstadt, Mathildenhöhe in Darmstadt, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. All these things um, you can take for free, all these trains, because you paid the semester contribution. And with your little student ID, you also get like lower rates in museums and swimming pools, and uh, you pay less in the student cafe, in the cafeteria. So it's like a gym membership. So you pay something, but you also get something in return. You, you get to use facilities. Um, it's not just a fee. Um, that's why we say it's a contribution, but it's a membership. You get um, benefits back. Students then have to pay health insurance um, and rent and all these, and of course, food and makeup and partying and study material and whatever you guys need. And um, this adds up to roughly eight, 900 euro, um, which um, is very similar to the amount of money you need for your student visa anyways. That is 934 or 32 euro at the moment. So roughly a thousand euro Germany things students need for their visa anyways. So Fulda is definitely in the limit. It's not more expensive than what uh, Germany thinks you'd need um, as sufficient funding. So uh, one way to look at why to study a full university would be, yeah, we got a wide range of options and applied sciences is always a great combination of theory and practice. And we are pretty, pretty young, founded in 1974. Um, so state-of-the-art equipment and yeah, from, from preparatory program to doctorate, wherever you are right now, we can welcome you in and you can just start uh, with whatever you need. Um, so there are great, great um, factors of why studying here is a good idea. But since we talk about um, business studies and uh, finance studies and management studies, um, I thought I'd throw in, and I started with the career, perspective. So yeah, pre-study, um, there's also an internship in it, you get prepared. So that'll increase career opportunities. Even pre-study participants have company visits. Um, having study abroad opportunities and double degrees increases chances of employment. Um, our teaching staff, they are practitioners. So your finance prof used to work for the German stock exchange in Frankfurt. So it's not people who are only university trained. They did work in the real life and they bring back knowledge, networks, um, state of the art, um, ideas and concepts and not antiquate um, information from back in the day when they were students. Um, there is a career service for international students. There is a business startup service. There are departmental placement officers who help you find internships and jobs. Um, EU placement coordinators who, believe it or not, help you find internships in the European Union. Uh, we have next week, we have a company recruitment fair. So 50 companies on two days, 25 and 25, 50 companies from the region and Germany come to Fulda to scout um, future staff members. You can obtain a PhD. Um, if that does not boost uh, a career in Germany, I don't know what does. Um, if you have questions, if you like what you heard, if something's unclear, please never hesitate to reach out. Uh, I do prefer email um, because I can reply to that from wherever I am. Uh, train, pub, office, uh, phone's a bit difficult. And thank you so much. I think we still have some time for questions. And um, cheers, guys. Yes, thank you very much, Marco. We indeed have some time left. Thank you for the presentations. And I would suggest now to jump into the questions directly. And let me start with the question to you, actually, Marco. It was regarding the first program. I suppose it was not specified, but my guess is that it was about bachelor levels program. Is a studying colleague a must? There were two questions regarding this. Do they have to go through studying colleague or not for this program? Application requirements, admission requirements, and that is a question for an application admission requirement, totally depend on the person's background who's asking the question. I do not know which secondary school diploma you hold um, and whether that secondary school diploma, high school diploma qualifies you to, um, whether you get a direct university entrance qualification or a direct Hochschulzugangsberechtigung, you have to love German, 
and um, that qualifies you to study in Germany. So if you tell me you've obtained a, a Kenyan secondary school certificate, I can tell you, you don't have a direct university entrance qualification without any time spent at a recognized university in Kenya. If you tell me you have a buck from the Francophone part of Cameroon, I can tell you, you have a direct university entrance qualification. So depending on who's asking, uh, I might have to answer the question, yes or no. If you are in need of a student colleague, Fulda University has a preparatory program called pre-college in which you can obtain your direct university entrance qualification and then study a bachelor's program here at Fulda University. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Marco. The next question I would say, yeah, this question was asked several times. And by the way, Katarina, thanks a lot for addressing so many questions already uh, in the chat. And there was a question regarding the Duolingo also, because both of you said, okay, TOEFL, IELTS, both work fine. Is the Duolingo English test also accepted for one of the four programs, actually? Maybe, Katarina, we could start with you. I'm not that familiar with Duolingo yet. What we have, we have the classics, we have like IELTS, TOEFL, we also ex um, accept um, a certificate which which basically states you have a level on a B2 according mm -hmm. to the European Union recognition language. I don't know the exact name of it. <laughs> so if Duolingo, Duolingo provides it, yes, but I'm not sure because I'm, I have no experience with this one yet. It should state B2 according to the European Union. If that is the case, we would accept it. Mm -hmm. But the standards like LTS and TOEFL, yeah. we don't need a GMAT. A lot of a lot of applicants ask that you don't need a GMAT for us. Yeah, that's good addition. Thanks, thanks, Katarina and Marco. Would you add something from your side? Uh, so yeah, I mean, generally, I also mentioned like B two C one and stuff, and that's obviously always according to the common European framework of languages. Um, and um, our business department then has an overview. I am looking it up. And it's also different from department uh, to department between universities anyways, but sometimes even within universities, what scores and what certificates are required and accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, good news is our business department accepts Duolingo. Oh, okay. uh, Duolingo English test. And for B2, you need 100 points or more. Okay. Duolingo English test, 100 points or more. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's move now to the next question. I think it was cleared up quite nicely by both speakers. And now the next one is, uh, is there any payment plan for semester tuition fees? I would say yeah, more about con contribution fees. I think this is what they mean. Um, anyone who feels comfortable could start with that. If I understand it correctly, if they can pay it in like, not, yeah. not the sum. Um, as far as I know, no. Um, I would need to check in with the student administration office because they take care of, of the of, of the fees. As far as I know, because we are public university, we have like a certain deadline until the money has to be come has to come in, and that's basically it. There might be some options if students have um, like difficulties. Um, I would suggest if they already know they would have such a difficulty to to contact us and then we'll check in with the administration office if there is something slightly different if we would have been a private university i think that's that's they're more flexible because we are public it's like standard um standard deadlines for for the for the fees mm -hmm. okay fair enough thanks katarina and from marco's side would there be any addition yeah, there's no no plan available or installments, but since we only charge a 300 euro semester contribution, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's like manageable to to transfer that all at once. I suppose it's it's a different question when we talk about the 1500 euro uh, tuition fees for non-EU students in in Baden Württemberg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, the next question would be, um, I think it is for uh, one of the programs that Marco presented. Do I need to know German language before studying in your university, Marco? I think you mentioned at one program, it was C1 level required, right? Yeah, again, um, um, we have 60 study programs and there are only a couple that are fully taught in English. Mm -hmm. And um, so depending on the program, I'd have to say 
yes or no. So international business and management is fully taught in English, no German skills required. International management does require German skills. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I said earlier, like admission application requirement uh, questions also depend on what program we're talking about and also on your background. If, um, uh, if someone has a, I don't know, a, an international baccalaureate and maybe took German, you don't need an extra certificate. We can recognize that German as a foreign language from the IB. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes questions also go in that direction. Do I need a certificate? Um, not if it's not included. Fun fact, a German passport, if your grandpa was German or something, does not count as a German language uh, certificate. <laughs> it used to up until a few years ago, funny enough. Oh. That's quite funny enough, actually. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, now about the employability of graduates. I think this question is for both of you. Um, yeah, what is the employability maybe of the graduates? What is the yeah percentage of the graduates that are now employed from both of your side, from both the universities or programs or programs? Uh, Katarina, would you like to start with that? Any info? Of course, it might be too specific, but if you have any info on that. Yeah, I would say, I, um... Before uh, Corona, we had most of the students did an internship, which which was like very easy for them to get a job, even if they didn't have any German language skills, because we have like Mercedes close by, Porsche and Bosch, and they usually need, you know, they have like English anyway in their daily life. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the students did like a job straight away due to the internship they did before submitting the thesis. With Corona, it depends on the economic situation, but I would still say even with this difficulties that 90% of the students get something straight away. It depends on, on, some students want to have something very specific and they want to work in a specific area, then it might be a little bit difficult or they want just to stay in a certain area, but I would say they have, we usually have, they usually have no, no problems with mm -hmm. getting something. I would recommend if you want to improve your employability to learn German, although it's not compulsory for us, especially if you want to work in middle-sized companies, which we have a lot in Baden-Württemberg as well, and they are very, they have like a certain market niche, they have, um, you know, they're still working worldwide, but you still have German, um, you know, German, um, you still have to talk German on a regular basis. So if you want to have Great chances, I would recommend learning German overall, even without German language skills. Um, you have very good chances, 90% straight away, and then last 10%, yeah, depending on what you want to do. Great. Thank you very much, Katarina, for nice advice. Um, Marco? Um, the, I, I always dread the employability question um, because one thing, um, um, data protection makes it actually difficult to follow up on your graduates. If they do not tell us what they're, if, what they're doing, we have no idea where they end up. Um, that's a question that's very American, I find. American universities follow up on their graduates much more because they also rely on donations from future very successful graduates. Um, it's a topic many German universities still not yet follow up. Second, um, I find that question always interesting because it has a notion of, are you a good university if your graduates find a job very soon after graduation? Mm -hmm. And I have to say, if your graduate sucks, it's not the university's fault. If you graduate with a 4.0 4 GPA and you've never did an internship or you never, you never learned a foreign language or you never showed any interest in, any, in anything, well, maybe nobody hires you, but it's totally up to the student. I can only say universities nowadays, uh, they are bursting with opportunities to actually get engaged, get in touch, whether it's entrepreneurship courses, field trips, um, study abroad, you name it, um, social engagement, civic engagement. Also, that can help um, networking and um, employability, but it kind of, there always is the notion like you are a good university if I find a job soon. Um, and that's to me also at least to a very high uh, amount up to, to the student, to the graduate. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I agree as well. <laughs> That's good, a really good point. Great. Maybe also in 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 regards for the for the finance students because they're usually more you know um, focused on on numbers and so on. We have like this module management skills because this is one of the areas which a lot of students think they don't need because well we are all you know we all have our soft skills and so on. And from our experience, this is one of the most important one because yeah. This is like something that actually a lot of people need to learn more about. So, but as Marco said, it really depends on the student as well. You have, because we are quite small um, and we have lecturers from, from companies and if they have some, they are, they are also interested in the students. So if they have something for them, they will tell them. That's what I mean. But you also have to provide something um, from, from yourself, but there are definitely opportunities for everyone. Fair enough. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. Um, let's move forward, I would say. Um, yeah, I just quickly uh, also dropped uh, the link to the scholarship issue because there were the questions regarding scholarship. And yeah, you can find some of the scholarship opportunities in Germany when you follow this link, for example, DAD and Deutschland Stipendium that, for example, Katarina also mentioned and uh, in her answer to you. And yeah, you can find some more options there regarding scholarships and yeah as international students you are eligible for scholarship but depending on where you want to study what you want to study etc etc there will be different opportunities um adil was saying i need to resolve some doubt how can i have one-on-one -on -one discussion adil um both of the speakers actually shared with uh, shared already uh, information contact details i also put it in the chat please follow up with these emails i think it would be the best thing to arrange the meeting um if it's possible uh, the next question, uh, yeah, there was also one question regarding UniAssist uh, for Katarina, and there was a question whether it will be a different deadline for UniAssist. Guys, just to, to make things clear, uh, so the deadline is that is set by the program, but if the UniAssist is also requiring, for example, the VPD, you have to apply even earlier because you need to send uh, the documents to UniAssist, then get back the VPD, uh, then send a whole package to the program. So it will just take much more time. And so to, to fit the UniAssist that, uh, to the de deadline of the program, you would need just to act a bit more swiftly. Just to put uh, to make this clear, because UniAssist is sometimes... Yeah, uh, bring some questions in. And also, uh, this was the brief answer. If you want to find more answers on UniAssist, check out also our articles on UniAssist. Uh, okay, we can quickly wrap it up. There's a question, a couple of questions from Anthony, who has just joined. Sorry, I didn't join on time. No worries. Thanks for being here. Uh, is there any bachelor course taught in English, management, finance, economics, or IT-related summer semester, to be precise? Yeah, uh, Marco will address this question, I guess, uh, with his uh, program, bachelor program. And the second one is, can I apply direct without the student colleague? Yeah, I have a high school certificate from Nigeria and also one year transcript from a University of Nigeria. This is a question that was also addressed by Marco already. But yeah, Marco, would you wrap it up? Because this is more towards the bachelor's program question. Um, sure. Uh, first question, yes, there are. I mean, my German university is the perfect place to look for English taught bachelor's program in a certain field that start in summer. Like that's exactly the filters you set <laughs> and you find all the wonderful programs. So you come to the right place. Um, I cannot list them all. I can only list our international business and management bachelor's program starting in summer semester in April. Application is now uh, via UniAssist. And Nigeria, again, um, uh, do you have a, a WASC, a West African uh, Senior School Certificate? Do you have a higher national diploma? Do you have a, uh, so I need to know, secondary school diploma doesn't help me. And you've got a one year um, transcript for one year at a university. I'd need to know which university because it needs to be a recognized university. Not all higher education institutions abroad are recognized in Germany. So education there does not count as higher education in Germany in the worst case. And then the year you did there does is not recognized at all. So you'd still need a student colleague. So I'd have to know which exactly, which high school diploma did you obtain? And um, which university and which degree uh, you did there for a year. Okay, great. Thank you, Marco. And Anthony, I also just put the link there where, can, where you can find also just have an overview of the programs that are available. And last but not least, Marco, you mentioned uh, the 
uh, the programs, the double program with in Australia and USA, if I'm not mistaken. And there was a question whether you could share the price for this double degree. Well, I mean, there are no tuition fees uh, for the Fulda part. And then as part of the agreement, um, our partners would not charge tuition fees for students coming from the partner universities. That's usually the beauty of these international university agreements. Um, so tuition wise, there's nothing to pay for a double degree um, right. because we have a partnership. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. Thank you very much, Katarina, first of all, for your presentations, then uh, for being so active in answering the questions also in chat and also live. Thanks for our attendees, for your questions, for joining in. Um, I hope it was informative. Uh, I hope you got your questions answered. And um, yeah, so if also uh, I just put it in the chat, also the links, direct links where you can leave us feedback for today's webinar on Facebook or Google. Yeah, um, feel feel free to do that. And we always check them uh, for the further inquiries and for the uh, uh, further uh, improvements. And yeah, the, if you have more questions to Katarina or Marco or generally to the programs that were presented today, uh, the they first of all, in the presentation that shared it with you. The second also, I put it in the chat. Must uh, it's uh, highly probable that by Monday you can also get these presentations. Uh, we'll see how it will work out with our speakers, and then you can also we'll, you will see also emails uh, there. You will have them there, and yeah, what I can say, I would say have a nice evening or morning or afternoon, depending on where are you joining us from, and I hope to see you on our future webinars as well. All of you guys, <laughs> our speakers and our guests as well. Uh, take care. And bye-bye.